Welcome to Infinity Rewatch, and let me just start off by saying, bring in the foam! We're having a foam party and a podcast. Ooh, party have you ever been to a foam party, Ryan? You ever been to a real I, foam party? I have not, but my friends told me about a story once where they went to a wedding in Mexico, and they went to a foam party, and apparently someone, like, apparently it was really hard to breathe, because, like, it's just foams everywhere, right? So oh, you gotta, like... Oh. It can it can get it can get pretty bad. Like it's just because it's it it literally it gets everywhere. And then sometimes when you inhale, you're inhaling technically water or soap or whatever you're inhaling, and it's disgusting. And it apparently gets in your drinks. It looks fun on photos, but from the experiences I heard, it doesn't sound fun at all. And the other side of this coin is is like people are like, oh, they probably weren't partying right. Believe me, I have <laughs> friends who like like I've I've I have a best friend. He's like a club promoter. That dude knows how to party, okay? That dude knows how to party. And by the sounds of it, yeah, the foam party thing was just, it's just crazy. It's, I don't know if it's worth it. Now, you said this person was in Mexico. Were they in Tijuana by any chance? I don't know, actually. I don't remember I don't remember the full details of said story. I just remember they, it was a destination wedding in Mexico is what I remember. I really Tijuana. Wish they, I wish they were in Tijuana just because... Tijuana foam party sounds like slang for something. <laughs> and I feel like it should be. It should be like, hey man, you wanna wanna get together for a Tijuana foam party? Like it feels like <laughs> it, it means something else. Uh and I want to know what it is. But in the meantime, I guess we'll just have to settle for talking about what if episode seven. Uh oh, yeah. who am I? What I'm I'm Andrew, right? Am I Andrew Fantasia? I th- I think you're Andrew, yeah. And I think I'm Ryan J. Whitehead. Okay, that clears things up. That's good to know. Uh, we are also party animals, but we're also old. So our idea of party is playing cribbage till like 10 p.m. and then calling it a night. Right? Hey, I'm all for a good board game night, honestly. Like, give me a tape. Give me a flat surface. Give me some of my most hardcore nerd friends. Let's set up some boards, get some dice out, and let's play some board games. It's funny you said that. That to, because... that to me is a party. That to me oh, is a party. A million percent. And I'm glad you said that today of all days because... Today, I received in the mail uh, the first wave of shipping from my Marvel United X-Men Kickstarter. So, Can't wait to play that. Yeah, we now have X-Men added to the roster. And then in May, you'll get literally like 100 more characters to choose from when I get the second part. Uh, I can't believe I have to wait till May. I don't want to wait till May. That's a long uh, time, dude. That's, that's Dude, so... we just got through the summer. <laughs> I know. I, I can't believe there, but that's Kickstarter for you. Kickstarter, you order something and then you just live your life. Don't even wait. Yeah. Just live your life. Because if you wait, you are going to become like Ray scratching on your wall every day. Maybe today my parents will come back for me. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Won't happen, Ray. I'm sorry. Um, so Party Thor. Ryan, what's the deal? What's the deal with Party Thor? Why is he partying? Oh. I don't know, man. I honestly... Uh, uh. <laughs> I, knew, I knew we were going to have the same reaction. <laughs> I don't know about the... I mean, you know, Isabella really, you know, kept my my expectations in perspective here. And to be fair, here's what I will say is the good thing about these shows, including What If is we get to spend more time with characters. Now, whether that's good or bad is entirely, entirely irrelevant. What the my point is, is, is like, for example, we've only seen Captain Marvel in like two movies. So mm. to get more time with her is great because now we get more time with the character. And thus, when we see Brie Larson again, she might have a better flow and feel with her character. So, yeah. you know, getting used to that character is a good thing. These what if stories, I have no idea who the target audience is. Like, I really don't. Like, I, you know, I thought like what if would be like solid comic book little Easter eggs through these little cheesy stories and stuff. And to be fair, though, it seems like those things are there. They're really not. Like, it just feels like a, uh, I don't know. I don't even know what it feels like. It just, it feels like, it feels like a, a high production it feels like a high production, like cartoon. It feels like a cartoon for kids, which is weird to say. Cause like, 
the original cartoons were for kids, but it was awesome. Like, you know what I mean? Like yeah. you look at you look at Batman the animated series, it's supposed to be from kids it's supposed to be for kids like seven to you know fourteen. Um and but you look at the source of the content, it's it's pretty intense. Yes. Um and the same goes for Spider Man and especially the same goes for X Men. I mean, I remember watching certain X Men episodes like probably around college time and after seeing them a long time ago and i was like man like this was an episode like that was intense yeah. like there was one with um, like a fully penetrative sex scene like they showed yeah. everything <laughs> <laughs> uh no but i would say there are scenes where they make rogue very suggestive in a very <laughs> very suggestive way uh, but my point is is like the maturity of like the the storytelling is pretty intense like um any episode with the Friends of Humanity really paints a yeah. very realistic picture, you know, especially in today's world kind of thing. And it's like, mm -hmm. wow, like that was like, again, like this was supposed to be a cartoon for like kids like seven, seven and up. Right. Um, and remember I remember when, uh, when the, sorry to interrupt you, but just remember that one part where the Friends of Humanity guy found out he was related to like Sabretooth and he just went mm -hmm. nuts. That's like, the you, episode you, I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Beauty and the Beast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, like that's, they, they leave that scene, like two minutes of him just ranting, like, I'm not, I'm, you know, he's just like losing <laughs> his mind. But so my point is with this show is when you're doing a comic book cartoon, what DC has taught us and, and has taught us consistently is just because it's a kid's cartoon doesn't mean it has to be aimed at kids. Right. Right. Like it doesn't have to feel like, you know, it doesn't have to feel like uh, we can't show this because clearly this is not supposed to be for that audience. It's it's more along the lines of like they they set everything up. And because you're older and, and the older you get, the more experience you have, your brain's able to connect the dots a bit more. But it, they it's not like they avoid it. They go they go into the subject. They just don't visually take it as far as it needs to go they let you do the math and they use the right amount of words to really convey what the message is um for example uh you know there are episodes with joker where he's like he's essentially killing people they don't show him killing people but they show this is they, they kind of give you the idea without mm -hmm. without censorship that's the word i was looking for yes. so so with this what if show it feels like a disney movie in that sense it feels like a disney movie in the sense of like it could be a really edgy and, and awesome cartoon experience and they kind of did that with the ant-man episode and they did that with the zombie episode but overall it's still just like you know like instead of a character being like oh you know damn it we need to do this it's like they're like oh gosh darn this is not this is not our way and it's <laughs> the, I feel like the writing is kind of weird. Like, it, like what they did with Thor in this episode, uh, it kind of just, it feels like a meme. And that's what's weird about it. It feels like a meme. And Thor is a really smart character. Like, he's he's fun. He's a fun character. Like, he, like the drinking thing is hilarious. Um, but I just feel like it's... I don't know. And again, I don't know if it's me getting knocked out of this, not understanding what this is meant to be. And I'm kind of just sitting on the outside here of, of other Marvel fans watching it and liking it. Mm -hmm. And I just, I don't get it. Like that joke, like the whole party joke. I don't, I don't, I didn't get it. And again, it was great to see Jane Foster. And I like to see more of her character and like that, that she's this astrophysicist and stuff. And yeah, like it, it was just weird. It was a weird episode for me. It was. And it, you know, you mentioned you don't know, you know, what this show is supposed to be. And it makes me wonder, because I haven't looked to see who writes which episode. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I am assuming because it's an anthology that every episode is written by a different person. If so, cool. Um, but I wonder if these writers ever got together at some point and said, what is this show? Or if it's literally just, hey, writer, 
you get to write an MCU what if story, go. Hey, writer B, you also get to write an MCU what if story, go. And that's it. Like there's no sense yeah. of communication. I don't know if that's the case or not. All I know is I, I want to walk you through what I felt just when I turned it on and saw the name of the episode, because I think it was last week when we were talking about what the question, what if means. And to me, the what if question should be something profound and at times kind of heartbreaking. And Mm -hmm. I use the example for you. I said, Ryan, imagine you got to see a what if world where you were an only child. Yeah. There's no Nick. It's just you. Uh, And then lo and behold, I turned on the TV yesterday and the episode was what if Thor was an only child? And I'm like, oh, this is going to be really beautiful. And then it's just, he parties. It's, it's the same Thor because when we meet Thor in Thor 1, he's still a party animal who's like egocentric, whatever. So it's the same Thor. It's the same guy. He just has a party on Earth. And there's no, you know, I feel like he would have had this party whether or not Loki was his brother. So really, yeah. it's a poor way to say this is what would happen if he was an only child. Plus, Loki shows up and they're best pals. Uh, so you really don't get the sense that this person is missing. You don't get the sense of here's a life and here's what happens when we take a big bite out of the life. And you can see what's missing and you can see what's become of it. There's nothing profound about it. It's just, I'm going to have a party. Come on, friends. Let's go to Midgard and have a party. Oh, hello, Loki. You're still part of my life in some way. In fact, we get along fabulously. Foam party. Um, I don't know. And again, I'm not the person making this show. So maybe they have a different idea of what the show is supposed to be. But I feel like this misses the point entirely of a what if question. Yeah, no, I I think you're absolutely right. I I don't know. And again, it's like there's an art form to when you should take something seriously, right? Like, like when, when people say, oh, you need to take this seriously, you know, in, in a show or in a show type basis, the fact of the matter is, is like, okay, so now I have to be serious. You know, it's mm-hmm. when you, when you want to do something that you need, when, when you want to do something in a show where you want people to take it seriously, you put emphasis into the lore, right? You put that emphasis into um, how the, how the relationships of things affect each other. And that's what it means by taking it seriously. But making your audience, making your audience kind of be like, you should take this seriously because it's, it's, you know, it is what it is. Then what happens is the audience, when you tell your audience that they kind of have to take it serious, take it seriously, it's kind of like, they have that choice. You know what I mean? They have the choice to choose that whether or not they want to take it seriously or not. And if that happens and you put too much independence into the viewer on like, Oh, you should take this seriously, or you should take this like as a joke, then it's not going to land. It's in my, in my mind, that's, I think that where I'm having this issue with this show is, is like, okay, we're pondering the question. What if, and I agree with you. Like, what if Thor didn't have didn't have Loki? And in the first movie, he had Loki, and he was still a party animal. He was a guy who loved battles, and he loved to party as hard as he battled. That was that was Thor. And what happened was he he went to or sorry the the Frost Giants invaded Asgard. And he's like, oh, you, you stepped on my, you know, you stepped on my garden. I'm going to go do that to you. Like he was a guy who took things personally. So what circumstances would have changed in that, even if he didn't have a kid because, or it didn't have a sibling like Loki, because that wouldn't have changed. Like at some point, someone would have crossed the line. It didn't matter. It didn't matter who, if someone crossed the line, Thor would be like the the angry child that he is at, at that time. And he would have gone in and smashed things because that's all he, that's the, what experience taught him. He's got to be this great warrior. And and if someone spits on you, you got to spit on them. Like that's the whole, that's the whole thing. And to me, like if the show's saying like, oh, you know, don't take this too seriously, take it as a, as a joke. And it, then it's like, what do you want me to do? <laughs> like, mm-hmm. how do you want me to invest in this show? Because, because to me, you know, you, I, one of the probably the biggest cor- 
cornerstones of modern cartoons is Avatar The Last Airbender. And that yeah. show, that show walks an amazing line of not taking itself too seriously to taking itself very seriously. And there are episodes that are funny as hell, but in the end, the relationships are serious. What's going on in that world is serious, but there, but there's always time for humor. And with what if it, it, everything seems like a blown up joke. And, Mm -hmm. and the same thing happened to me with Iron Man three, which is like, if the Mandarin's a joke, then this whole story is a joke because, because in the end it dismisses the importance of what it's doing to the character, which is like to Tony, when he figure out Mandarin's just Trevor Slatery and the real villain is this person, then this whole journey of Iron Man getting like, you know, almost losing happy Hogan, the destruction that he's wreaking, you know, is his depression is all just like a weird kind of setup, you know, it's, it's a weird setup to like the impact on his character. So I like, but that's the thing, like the fact that I'm asking myself, okay, should I not take the show too seriously? That's a problem. That's a big problem to me. Yeah. Avatar, the last airbender is a masterclass in writing period. In, in finding balance in writing, in world building. It's a masterclass in everything. Like those guys are, yeah. I was watching it earlier today. It's friggin', you can't not love that show. Um, right. And what what if has done it just seems to be, you know, existing for giggles and that's fine. I am, I am, you know what? I would rather they put their effort into making the movies and the other shows good. You know, yeah. if they can only allocate the effort to certain places, I would, I would, I, I like it as it is. Let's leave what if to just be the silly one. But when you have such a powerful question as what if, and you ask powerful questions like what if Thor was an only child, I think, I feel like there's a thousand more profound roads you could have gone down instead of just, I guess I'll have a party on earth. Like, you know, what did he learn from being an older brother? that he doesn't learn here. Is he a worse person because of it? You know, in my mind, Thor, yes, Thor was an asshole in Thor one, but maybe seeing Loki be like the sneaky little jerk. Who's always doing evil things off to the side. Maybe seeing that kind of grew a conscience in him and and he had a better idea of right and wrong. And maybe he had a better idea of responsibility because he had a little brother to look after. So you take away his moral core and you take away that responsibility by taking away Loki. What if this Thor is evil? What if he just became an evil guy because he didn't have Loki to bounce off of? Uh, And that would have just led down a more profound road. You know, what if Mm -hmm. that leads to him failing when he got sent to earth and he doesn't become worthy and uh, you know, the hammer just stays with Odin or something. And then that starts another chain reaction. Stories like this would not only open up the world more, but it would get us asking more questions. Like, what if the radioactive spider bit MJ? You know, what's her life like? And then because of that, what's Peter's life like? Yeah. Uh, well, we get we get that, though. We we already get that kind of story because that's, that's the whole reason Spider-Gwen exists. Is right. that very question, right? Like, that's like, what if Gwen got bitten by a spider? Mm-hmm. So like, and look how it's, it became such a popular thing that now spider Gwen is pretty much a household name. Like she was in one of the most popular Spider-Man movies ever. So asking those right questions and answering them the right way can theoretically create an alternate something that's so powerful. You get something like spider Gwen and lo and behold, it becomes its own thing that people know and love. Not only that it becomes its own thing, but but look at the direction. Like when you look at Miles Morales, for example, and Spider Gwen, look at what happens to those characters. They start to drive themselves into the main story. And yes. and and more importantly, become the narrative of said yes. story. And I think with what if they just, it doesn't seem like they quite have found that narrative to merge it into that story. 
uh, to the main MCU narrative. The MCU has become so massive now that there are so many different characters that can drive narratives and Marvel kind of Marvel cinematic universe itself kind of points the camera and says, this person's going to drive a narrative, but Mm. every show we've seen like uh, Falcon winter soldier. And then on top of that one division and on top of that Loki, um, it feels like what if should be playing a part, but it's not. I don't think personally me, I don't think it is. And we, I mean, you know, again, I'm, I'm kind of broken record here, but like, that I think that's my problem. Is like, is Uwatu this hero driving the narrative? And and is there a narrative to drive? Uh, and like, and if there I, isn't, then this doesn't live up to the Marvel formula because that's what makes Marvel interesting. Is everything that happens in Marvel affects something, and that's why we should take it seriously. But yes, we haven't quite seen that yet. I mean, the no. ending of this episode is up for debate, which I'm willing to debate it, but mm-hmm. but we're not there yet. And you bring up Spider-Gwen and Miles Morales, and I think they're a perfect example because they were both the answer to two separate what-if questions. And now look how popular they've become. In 25 years, if they make a movie called Thor Into the Asgard-verse, yeah. Do you really think one of those Thors is going to be Party Thor? Right? Uh, yeah. So that is, uh, that's how I'm feeling about the state of this show is it's giving us these quote unquote alternate characters, but so little is alternate about them that I find myself just asking, okay, what's the point? Right. But, yeah. you know, it's starting to feel like they ordered 10 episodes when really they only had great ideas for like five. Um, right. Based on what we've seen. Right. Mm-hmm. Like it, it, I mean, that's it. I a hundred percent keep going, man. But I just want to jump in on that. Like it, based on what we've seen, like it feels like these, it feels like some of these ideas are just toss aways. And that, that to me is you don't want to do that with, with what you've built with the MCU at this point. No. And right now, all it feels like to me uh, is this board game that I just got Marvel United, it, it has this, you know, it has this um, malleability to it, this game where yes, you could play as Cyclops and storm and fight Magneto because, you know, that's, that's a normal thing that would happen, but then you could also play as like long shot and black Panther and you're fighting the green goblin. Uh, like you can just mix and match whoever and whatever you want. And that's what this show feels like. It just feels like, hey, you know, it'd be funny if uh, if Killmonger was just friends with Tony Stark now. Um, and you still have the same Killmonger doing the same thing and mm-hmm. pretty much achieving the same goal. He's just meeting different people along the way. And it's not so much profound as it is just uh, swapping an X for a Y. Yes, uh, yeah. It, I feel like half of these episodes should feel like it's a wonderful life, and so far the only one that has has that's come close is Doctor Strange. Yeah, and I think here's the thing: is I think what if really breaks a pattern, um, and the way the reason why I say that is because the Disney Plus shows so far they've introduced a villain, and let me tell you, I watched that that particular episode where they introduce that villain and it's amazing. It's just one of the best villain introductions I've ever seen in a long time. Which one are you um, talking about? Are you talking about a uh, U.S. agent? Ah, uh, uh, good one. No, uh, <laughs> no man. I'm talking about Kang, the freaking conqueror. Oh, right, right, right. <laughs> that is like the best homage to wizard of oz i have ever seen Hmm. and as someone who appreciates wizard of oz in the history in in its history and what it's done for like the film industry and all this stuff using that i've never seen the wizard of oz formula used so well in another totally different um world 
you know what I mean? Like in, in the Marvel world. And it's beautiful. But my point is, so you got these Disney Plus shows. You got WandaVision, you got Falcon and Winter Soldier, you got um, you got Loki. Loki, and then you got What If. And you also got Hawkeye coming, which we saw the trailer. It's amazing. I'm very excited for it. You got the Haley, beautiful Haley, uh, Statenfield mm. or Stanfield. Um, so here's the thing. So in WandaVision, they introduce um, uh, speed and magic. Uh, and uh, in Falcon and Winter Soldier, they introduced the new, uh, the new Captain America, and they also introduced the U.S. agent. Um, and then even in Black Widow, they introduced the new Black Widow. Uh, yeah. And then in Disney Plus, they um, in Loki, they introduced Kang. In Hawkeye, they introduced the new Hawkeye. So already we got enough members to do the Young Avengers. And you can also count Miss Marvel on top of that because um, we know she's coming, though, though she just got pushed back to early next year. Uh, and on top of that, we know that we got She-Hulk coming. So mm -hmm. most of the members, uh, aside from She-Hulk, most of the members are members of the Young Avengers. So in the Disney Plus series, if you want to follow a narrative, if you will, then it looks like we're going to get a Young Avengers Disney Plus show where all the Young Avengers get together and hoo Mm -hmm. um so that would be really cool so for example in she hulk they could introduce amadeus chow uh and he could be the young hulkling right um or they could even introduce the i think hulkling's the a scroll hulk thing um they could do that with secret invasion so they his name should again, have totally been skrulk skrulk i like that <laughs> yeah should have been that um mm -hmm. but yeah so it, it's clear where it's going but what if I have no idea where it's going. Like I honestly couldn't tell you. I, I and, it's it's so bizarre. And and Uatu could be like, for example, Uatu, you could take Uatu from the show and he could warn the young Avengers that like a, an, an, an imminent threat is coming, right? Um there was a nod in this episode with Thor and the iPad thing, which was just completely silly. I'm sorry, if you're the head of science and magic, if you're if you're that like level of knowledge, just like how do you not know how it, I mean like they do kind of dodge the bullet a little bit where he's like, oh yeah, it would take our people to make something like so long to make something like this. And it's like, would they though? Like I'm sure <laughs> if they felt that it was necessary, they would have made it and it would have happened, but they didn't. Um, but again, I feel like I'm getting too analytical because the show is telling me not to take it too seriously. Right. Like, yeah, that's it's, I mean. it's almost like we have to get analytical because the show isn't. And yeah, uh, I mean, you bring up all these other things that are happening. You bring up like all the world building that's been done in WandaVision mm -hmm. and in Black Widow, et cetera, and how much more there is to come. So, you know, like to, to sit back, I, I will sit back and say, there is so much great world building happening already yeah. that if they just want to take a break and give us this silly cartoon that doesn't have any world building in it i'll be like you know what like you've more than earned it marvel i get that fine i i understand completely have your cartoon that doesn't tie into anything and it just does its own thing and it just kind of sits there um and you know i will gladly devour every episode of what if without ever expecting it to introduce something key to the MCU lore. I, I will happily let it be what it is. I just feel like you can ask much more profound what if questions and have much more profound what if answers. Don't worry about fitting into lore. It doesn't have to at all. But you can do such a better job with this idea. And I, as somebody who has not read what if comics, I mean... I would defer to you for this, but I am sure any what if com like there has been a bunch of what if comics that have told much more profound and powerful stories than what's going on here. I can't imagine 22 pages of Thor partying and then having to pick up because his mom is coming. That to me just feels like it feels like they're taking a break and just trying to have a good time and just let their free flow pen write the script. And that's fine. But 
it's such they have such a great opportunity to do cool stuff without having to worry about lore uh, that they it just feels like they're they're missing out. They they they've got this tree full of low hanging fruit and they're not plucking it and instead they're just taking off bark. I feel like the bark is fine. Like the bark's the bark's yeah. fine, but it, you know the fruit would taste much sweeter. Yeah, no, and and again, I think where I was trying to go with this here is is that I think what if is too abstract of a concept to build into the MCU. Mm-hmm. I, it's way too abstract. I mean, WandaVision was abstract, but when we got to episode four and how it all came together, it, it didn't matter. It like once once episode four and five came in, it didn't matter how abstract it was because you, you understood the role it served in the MCU. And that that to me, that to me is the moment I'm waiting for. Is and and Loki, Loki, they 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 met absurdity with they met absurdity with like purpose right out of the gate like at the first episode and they did yeah. it beautifully i will still argue today that interrogation scene is the best profound what if moment you know that it gives you so much it just mm. it, it, it gives so much life to the character and and here's where we go back to kind of full circle here is that with these shows, we get to spend more time with these characters with Loki. We got to spend a lot of time with Loki, but you know, Loki was so good in the MCU that we've seen thus far. His whole journey from Thor to Endgame was so much fun. And we wanted, we wanted more. We wanted more. So they gave it to us. They gave us more Loki. And not only did they have fun with Loki, I like when Loki figures out um, how the other Loki is 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 dodging their radar, uh, the TVA's radar and stuff, and like he's being his fun self and just being as crazy as he is. Um, it was beautiful. It was the, the, this fun was had, and it was it was fantastic. With this what if show, it seems like yeah they're having a lot of fun, and it's fun to see these characters have these kind of moments but to make the whole narrative feel like that is kind of again it 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 just takes me back to that other the past podcast episode where i talked about why is the rum gone like i don't (laughs) care i don't care that thor likes to party i get it i got the joke i got it he likes to party and he'd be weird but he's so ridiculously handsome that people are just gonna love him for it anyway i got it i got that in the very first movie and it's fun that you blew it up if it was the first 10 minutes, if the first 10 minutes of that what if episode was like how much he loves to party and everything. And then they got into some like real core, sorry, real lore building experience. Great. Let's do it. Let's have real fun with it. Like if he was, if he was a, an only child and you know, okay. So the events of Thor one wouldn't quite have happened the dark elves potentially still would have came because what didn't change was Jane Foster was still Jane Foster. Hmm. Frigga was still Frigga. Odin was still Odin and Thor was still Thor uh, with the warriors three and lady Sif. And so that means to me that the, she would have still found a magic source, discovered the reality stone. Boom. Oh no. Dark elves. And then Frigga dies, but this this Thor hasn't had his moral compass challenged like Loki. So if you lose someone like Frigga, the only person that he listens to, then we got like a rampaging Thor without anyone holding him back. And that to me would mean that it would be an epic battle of like Thor versus Odin. Right. Or in this case, what was a fun moment for me was Thor versus Captain Marvel. Uh, right like they again they take these great pairings that haven't happened yet and they're they're kind of i don't want to say wasting them because that feels like a mean word but it really does feel like that thor captain marvel fight is wasted on just the fact that there's she's just fighting him because he's trying to have a party yeah it it really just comes down to i don't like the, the the questions they're asking are not taking you down roads far enough. If, if the MCU is a, a, a paved cobblestone path running through a forest, 
what if should take you so deep that you can't see the path anymore because there's too many trees in the way. And as of right now, most of the questions they're asking, you're just skirting the edge of the path and you're walking through the trees, but all you have to do is take one step to the right and you're back on the path. Yeah. Uh, like last week and this week, Killmonger and Thor are exactly the same people achieving pretty much exactly the same thing with just little mm -hmm. bumps in the road along the way. And it's, it's really not, uh, it's really not the best use of the what if question. And like on the flip side of this, now you have what came out yesterday as well, which is star Wars visions. Yes. Um, did you get a chance cool. to watch any of star Wars visions? Watched the first episode last night and man, was I not disappointed. It was so cool. It was really nice to see the, the Japanese influence on the Star Wars universe. And it's funny because it's funny you bring it up within this show because Isabel was saying, how is this different from Marvel's what if? Cause it just feels like the same idea recycled in Star mm -hmm. Wars. It does. And it, I, I had to read up on it cause I wasn't hundred percent sure what they were going for with visions, but apparently it's been confirmed. Visions is not Canon. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. So not, nothing that happens in it is super canon. It's just they're letting these anime studios just kind of play around and tell these stories with the backdrop of Star Wars. And then maybe, you know, if one of these stories resonates enough, maybe they will make it canon and expand upon it. Uh, uh, and I think Star Wars is too different an animal for me to say, that's what What If should be doing, because I don't think that's what What If should be doing. But it's funny how you have one thing that's saying, we're not canon, we're just here to have fun. And meanwhile, they're telling like some really serious emotional stories. And then you have something that's saying, we're going to be canon, but we're not really telling serious emotional stories. We're just kind of being silly. And they're they're walking these these strange roads, both of them. And I I, I watched all of Visions yesterday. I just kind of binged it because I was wow. I just you wanted to see rushed it. it. Yeah, but they're not I, that long I'm, though either. They're like fifteen minutes, twenty minutes. Yeah, long. they're all really short. I'm not an anime fan at all, so I was just in it for like the Star Wars of it all. And some of the stories, I'm like, no, thank you. And then some of the other stories, I was like, ooh, yeah, I like this. This uh, there's one. I won't spoil it for you, but there's one called the ninth Jedi. I think that's what it's called. The ninth Jedi. And just the music they used and the story they told, I was like, this could be a movie. This could be the next, you know, post Skywalker saga movie. If they want to expand, cause this is a great idea. And so far, again, what if's a very different show, but so far I haven't seen anything in what if that makes me think this is even cooler than what really happened. Uh, so it's, it's really funny how these two shows are coming out at the same time and they're both approaching it from very different ways. I just find that interesting. I find it cool that they're both experimenting with something so similar at once. Yeah, it, it's true. And, and yeah, so I agree with you. And, and definitely Isabel was right for saying that too. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, it's the first episode was really good for me in Star Wars Visions. But going back to what if, you know, even Isabel was saying she's like, maybe you're expecting like too much of this show. But is that my fault? You know what See, I mean? I don't like, I don't know, because what did they tell us to expect? And that's the thing. I don't know if anybody did, because I'm not sure if they know what they want this show to be. yet. They, exactly. Exactly. Um, but you know, and, and, you know, you talked about the, the fight between actually, you know what, before I get to that fight scene, I will say this and here's in on that note, right. They didn't tell us what to expect with the show. Like the, that's the thing. Like there's kind of this gray area of like what this show is. And then you get these little subliminal nods or sorry, the little subtext within this episode that could mean a lot. Um, uh, Jane Foster was talking about the collapse of a star uh, and and she accuses Thor was that you and Thor then says like oh yeah you know we tried to stop it from happening but it happened but then later on he almost dodges that it didn't like it wasn't him he says like oh like not that like as if he wasn't even part of it 
You know what I mean? Like he didn't even know that he was part of it. And then what's interesting is like, she's like, okay, well what happened to it? And so like, so then like, of course, like the comic book mind is like, Oh man, totally Galactus. Galactus eats planets and stars. Like who's to say he didn't eat it. Right. Yeah. Um, and then, and then later on he's with the scrolls and they're all pretending to be Thor. So it's like, okay, there's a secret invasion nod there. That could happen. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, then we get the ending and the ending is huge. We see, uh, Ultron having all the stones and then it reveals to be vision. And so if that's the case, uh, if that's the case, then like, like, okay, what does that mean? And what will concern me and upset me is if the next episode has nothing to do with it. You know what I mean? Like they dropped, oh, wow. they dropped a big scene. Uh, and, and the next episode's like, okay, and now we go to, you know, uh, now we go to, you know, what if Tony was a party boy this whole time? <laughs> what if Tony liked having sex with random women before he yeah. became Iron Man? Yeah, like, or, or, you know, just, yeah, something ridiculous like that. Like, uh, like what if Peter Quill grew up with his parents, like, mm -hmm. or grew up with his mom and had a full life with his mom? Oh, wait, we saw that too. Um, so yeah, it's just, yeah, I'll be very upset if they do not, not even build something off of that last scene i'll like i'll be like then what's the point like what's the point of us watching this i, I don't want you to prep yourself because i have a feeling they're not gonna talk about this scene. because you know marvel zombies ended with wakanda taken over by zombie thanos um yeah. and i i remember a lot of people saying like oh we want to see more of that but even then i was like yeah we're not we're not going back to zombies. That's it. Like we, we get the idea. And then with the Peter Quill episode, same thing. Uh, T'Challa is star Lord. Great. So Peter spends his life on earth. He works for a dairy queen. It ends with ego showing up I mean, like, Hey Peter, I'm, I'm, I'm your dad. And that's, it. they just kind of leave it to you to piece together what would happen next. Yeah. Um, so I feel like with this and, I did not read by uh, like by the way like I I totally missed that that was supposed to be Ultron slash Vision. I thought it was uh, 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 what's his face from the Eternals. I thought it was the the um, the Celestial. The, yeah, because he looked like a Celestial thing. Uh, so I totally missed out on the Ultron thing. But I have a feeling we're not going to see hide nor hair of that again. It's just. Hey, I guess Thor's gonna have to fight this thing now, and he's not friends with the Avengers yet, so maybe he'll lose, and this thing will take over the world. That that does not feel earned. Yeah, right. Doctor Strange alone, trying to hold back the universe collapsing after his hubris, that is earned. This just feels like they threw this in at the last minute to say, oh, but this world isn't as good as our world because look what happens now. You know, you know what I mean? Like it just, it just feels like a way for them to say, uh, Oh, but now this happens. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I wouldn't get your hopes up next week, buddy. I don't think we're going to see those stones come back uh, there. Yeah. Well, we'll see. I mean, we'll see what, don't get me wrong. Like I'm still going to watch this through to the end, but I think the, I think what's going to happen is I'm just going to accept that it happened and just move on, you know? And that's not what I want to feel like Sung Chi. I need to watch it again. Like I need to see it. I need to know what did I miss? You know, how, what is this going to do to the MCU? And if what if ends on the note that it's currently ending on, then I'll just be like, yeah, it was cool. I mean, it's an interesting concept, but like, but I won't, I won't need to watch it again or I won't have this lasting impression that that was it. Like there's, you know, that, that this is going to be part of the MCU history. That's going to be a pivoting, a turning point. You know what I mean? Yeah. And if they don't want it to be, 
if they want this to be just a sideshow that we're not meant to look at as a turning point, I can 100% respect that. Um, like, like you said, we have so many other shows and movies coming that will be turning points. So I yeah. am more than happy. You know, I, I, I feel like I, I, I can respect what they're giving us. It's just, this is a, a very cerebral question. You have named your show after literally the most cerebral exploratory question a human being can ask. And if you're not taking advantage of that, then why did you do this? That's all. That's it. hundred percent. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that sums it up right there, but we have so much Marvel stuff. I mean, cause like, I again, know. and that's the thing, like, uh, that's, that's the, that's the, the thing also I want to get to is there's so much Marvel stuff out there. If this is a sideshow, why waste the opportunity? We should be constantly going like, and, and this show is a great tool for us to explore more, but we're still getting these same stories just told in a slightly different way, but we're still going to the same places. We're still seeing the same things happen. The thing that was cool about this episode was the fight between Captain Marvel and Thor, because now we got to spend more time with characters who normally don't interact with each other. We got to see them in Endgame of Thor being like, I like this one. And that's like really all the interaction they had. Like, it was like, oh, I like this one. This one's fun. And yeah. it's, and then we got to see him do the whole, you know, Big Lebowski thing. But like, Captain Marvel has been like off world doing her thing, but we don't know what that means. We don't know where she's going. And this show is awesome to have her back and take on Thor only to be kind of like a babysitter to him. Yeah. Right. Like that's, that's weird to me. It's, it's so weird. And it's, it's, that's why, like, there's so much to the Marvel MCU. Like, there's so much in the comics they could still pull from. There's so many characters, so many things to do. Like, Blade, Moon Knight, we got all those characters coming. She-Hulk, you know. And, and you know, now that we're kind of getting near the end anyway, they just announced November 12th, we're getting another Disney day. And we're getting all That's sorts of right. content from Marvel. Apparently, they're going to announce a ton of stuff, plus more trailers. And if I'm that's glad you case, brought that day up because I'm like, yeah. I wanted to ask you about it. and I want to know yeah. what you think they're going to show off. If that's the case, if, if they, if that's the case and they are going to uh, like announce a ton of Marvel stuff. If what if is the sideshow again, like we're still seeing the same things, really. We're not getting anything massively different. In, Ca mm -hmm. in Captain Carter, we still went back to, you know, Hydra's secret base and they still tried some type of shenanigans with the, with the cube, right? Um, with Iron Man, we still went back to Iron Man 1. We still went to the desert. He went back to Stark's mansion, but he brought Killmonger with him. That was the only thing that's there. But we still ended up going to Wakanda 2. So went there, yeah. right? Like, and Guardians, we still went to nowhere and we went to, we went to a new bar or I think it's the same bar. I don't know, but we still went to, we still went to nowhere. You know what I mean? Like we still went to the same places and we're, we haven't really, I don't think we've even really introduced new characters aside from Watu. So we, we have so much ground to cover with the MCU. And if this show is just a small side show, then why? Why are we doing this? Why are we spending this time when there's so much more to do? There's so much more to see. And Uatu yeah. is our guide. He's he's the best tour guide we can get in, as a Marvel fan or even as a non-Marvel fan. He is the best tour guide we are ever going to get in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. This guy is going to take us places. Until the Fantastic Four come, this guy can take us as far as we want to go. Mm -hmm. And yet we're still going to the exact same places, just with, with slightly different stories. We got Marvel zombies. Yay. But I don't like zombies. So what am I getting out of this? <laughs> yeah, the outcomes of these stories are so irrelevant. It's like, 
to this point, it's like, what if the animal that Black Widow's mom trained was a monkey instead of a pig? It's like, what's, who cares? Why are we asking? Why are we asking yeah. this? She's still uh, doing the same thing. Even yeah. in your joke, even in your joke, it's still the same joke that we were talking about because she'd still be testing the animal and like controlling it to a T. Like, you know what I mean? I think oh, that God. the show is at its strongest when it's taking advantage of things that we cannot see because of what's already happened. Yes. Um, for example, Captain Carter, you know, what's done is done. So we, we cannot have a Captain Carter anymore. That's, that's just a fact. You know, we, we could have a Thor versus Captain Marvel in the future. That is a very likely thing that could happen. So I feel like why waste the time on it here? Show us something that can't happen anymore. Like, you know what would have been nice? A what if story where Iron Man actually does encounter the Mandarin, the real Mandarin. You know, what if Iron Man, what if that's the what if question? What if Iron Man went after the 10 rings to the point where he got right up to Mandarin? And what's yeah, what that? Yeah, how would he have That would have been a wicked episode. We can't have that in any movie or show. Iron Man's dead. Mandarin's doing his own thing. So that's a great way to give us something that the existing lore has already, you know, erased that possibility for us. So, like, I, I, there's so many more roads this could go down. It's just a shame it's going down the roads that it's going down. I don't know. There's three episodes left. What do you... Do you I haven't watched the mid-season trailer, so do you know what some of these upcoming episodes are? I didn't watch it either, and I did. Oh, that's right, you the, didn't. Yeah, yeah, the, for the strict purpose to see where this where this is going to go, and is it going to surprise me? Um, and and again, I I bet you, I bet you, the last episode we're going to be like, that was the best episode ever. Oh my god, like what an eye-opening experience! And if that happens, great. But. The way the show is going, and we've gotten past, and, and I always loved, here's the reason why, guys. I have a feeling that I'm going to be left with, like, that was good, but I'll, I, I'll just move on. You know what I mean? I won't, I won't have that lingering impression. I won't get into all that. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap you guys up with this. There's always, a friend of mine once told me, uh, I was, I was visiting, visiting them at a store once, and a friend of mine once told me, it takes four episodes. If it doesn't do it in four episodes, you're gonna waste your time. Because if it can't, if it can't get your attention in four episodes, then the show is doing something wrong to get you invested. And like mm -hmm. I talked about WandaVision, the fourth episode was a game changer. Yes. It was huge. Right? The other example I have is with an anime show called My Hero Academia. It's a, it's a great superhero story. It's a, it's a wonderful story. It's about a world of superheroes. People are born to be superheroes. They have, they're born with quirks. And this one kid who worships, worships heroes. He, he has a notebook. He runs around following heroes. He takes notes. And, and he has like this encyclopedia of all the different heroes, who they are, and all their stats and stuff. And... I remember watching the show and it's pretty heartbreaking. There's some pretty heartbreaking moments. Like he goes to the doctor and he, 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 on the day he's supposed to find out if he has a quirk and he's all excited. It's the best day ever for him. And, and this is the, like the second episode. So the second episode goes to the doctor. The doctor's like, I'm sorry, you don't have that identifying trigger that would make you a superhero. <laughs> the next episode is really or sorry the next scene is really depressing it is really sad um but but i remember talking to my friend about it and he's like he's like okay if you like anime so you need to check out the show and i'm and at first i i told him i'm like i've seen previews you know i'm not sure about it it's like just get to the fourth episode just get to the fourth episode if you love it mm -hmm. you're in for a ride got to the fourth episode it was the most groundbreaking scene I have ever seen in a show. It like it lives that moment lives up to like avatar status. Like it is the coolest scene I've ever seen. It is so good. And and all he said to me was, just get to the fourth episode. 
And the same goes for a lot of other cartoons. Avengers, Earth's Mightiest Heroes, a lot of people will tell me out of the first three episodes, they'll be like, ah, I don't feel like it's for me. Get to the fourth episode, rest from there. Like, it's, it's mm. it'll get you hooked. Um, so, yeah, uh, with What If, we're, like you said, we're episode seven. And if, if something is going to happen, it could be game-changing. It could be really awesome. But we're way past the fourth episode. And at least, you know, at the very least, I feel like the strongest ones being like Captain Carter and Doctor Strange Supreme, they were in those first four. Yeah. So at the very least, they're, uh, they're playing ball. They're, they're going by your friend's rules. Uh, so I don't know. We'll see. We got three left. Um, will episode 10 end with a live action scene where Uatu comes down to earth and then he walks into a cave and there's Angelina Jolie and she's like, we have to talk. Cause that's my impression of Angelina Jolie putting on a British voice. Uh, <laughs> like, like, is it, it going to end like that? Like, cause that would be interesting. Uh, but I'm not holding my breath and I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to score in the show. If it doesn't tie into the greater MCU, I can, I'll respect it for what it is, but I, I will, drop some points off the old, uh, um, you know, 10 points from Gryffindor. If you, uh, if you're not uh, taking advantage of that beautiful question, because that question um, just from a writing standpoint uh, can overwhelm with the amount of stuff you could do with it. That could be absolutely heartbreaking and absolutely beautiful. And the fact that we haven't gotten that yet in seven episodes, with the exception maybe of one, um, is disappointing. I think it's disappointing. But you know it's not disappointing? Foam parties. And foam uh, if, parties. You guys, if you guys want to have a big old foam party, then just contact Ryan Whitehead at all of his social media accounts and he will throw you a foam party for an exorbitant fee. He charges $2 million per foam party, but he puts on a good one. Uh, thank you uh, for that. Hopefully, mm-hmm. hopefully this this is hopefully this isn't the one episode where we go viral because that's not, <laughs> I do not want that kind of attention, dude. You'll make two <laughs> mil per party. Do it. <laughs> Maybe. What are those social media tags though? If people want to contact oh, you, oh, good segue. Oh, well done, sir. All right. Well, you can find me at on Twitter at Crusader Online. You can find me on Instagram at Ryan J Whitehead. And you can find me on twitch.tv forward slash Xbox Canada. Lovely. And I don't have phone parties, but you can contact me to do uh, personalized interventions. If your friends are addicted to things or you just need to sit them down and talk, you can hire me. I will come there and I will, you know, lighten the mood at your intervention. Every once in a while, I'll chime in with a, hey, you know, because they, they can get pretty serious sometimes. So I want to just make sure I'm there to help you ease the process and you can contact me at andrew fantasia at twitter and instagram and on youtube the andrew fantasia youtube channel where right now you can watch me count down to bond 25 with one james bond movie per day it's the biggest retrospective i've ever done on my channel and i'm almost done editing all the videos i'm on casino royale right now so we're getting close we're getting close ryan any final thoughts on what if season seven or on anything in general before we call all, it a day. I will say, what if this show is great? Or what if it's just a Marvel show? We'll see. We'll see. Maybe season two, every episode will be like, what if we did a better job than season one? <laughs> oh, burn. Oh, burn. Oh, uh, that was mean. I'm sorry, Marvel. We love you. Keep doing what you're doing. Anyway, That's thanks it. so much for listening. Uh, This has been Infinity Rewatch. Until then, please have a marvelous day. Hey, scumbags. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up on our video. As always, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Rebel Scum Podcast, for all the latest videos.